hello everyone and uh, thank you so much to the fast forward team and the tape for this opportunity to share my research into Karima Aboud, a photographer who is widely accepted as one of the first female Arab photographers. Today I'll be highlighting her commercial postcard work in relation to her publicized identity as the lady photographer of Palestine. But before I begin, I would just like to set the scene for this paper by showing you two real photo postcards produced sometime during the 1920s. So here we are in British Mandate Palestine, specifically at Mary's Well in Nazareth, which according to Christian tradition is the site of the Annunciation. One of these postcards was produced by Karima Aboud and the other by Fadil Sabah, a male photographer working in the same area at around the same time. But I'm not going to tell you who took which just yet. Um, this is a little quiz to see if you can guess, based on the imagery, um, which was taken by a man and which was taken by a woman. Any guesses? Anyone? <laughs> Karima Aboud was born in Bethlehem in 1893 and grew up during the tail end of Ottoman rule in Palestine. She worked as a professional photographer under British colonial rule until her death in 1940. Her work, however, went relatively unnoticed up until the mid-2000s, when local researchers in Nazareth and Bethlehem began piecing together her biography. She was born into a middle-class family, and her father, Saeed Aboud, was a well-known and well-traveled evangelical Lutheran pastor. This meant that the Aboud family was educated, well-connected to various international missionary groups, and also allowed for a certain kind of social mobility within Palestine at this time. By the time Karima Aboud was a teenager, she would have been familiar with studio photography as a well-established profession in places like nearby Jerusalem. But as you can probably guess, this was an occupation primarily reserved for men. In 2006, when Athen Rawat, a researcher from Nazareth, published an article about this unknown lady photographer who stamped her photographs, as you can see here, it was something of a revelation. We have little to no writing from Aboud herself, so her personal and professional aspirations are a mystery. In 2011, Reverend Mitri Raheb, the present pastor at the former Aboud parish in Bethlehem, used church documents to confirm the family's history and published his findings in an Arabic language book titled Karima Aboud, Pioneer Female Photographer of Palestine. It notably reproduced an advertisement that Aboud placed in a 1924 edition of Al Carmel newspaper, shown here to the right. In it, she refers to herself as the only national female photographer in Palestine who was available for portrait sittings. Over the past decade, articles, exhibitions, and videos based on the images from Merlewat's collection have highlighted her studio portraits of middle-class Palestinians from the 1920s and 30s, especially women. Photography historian Issam Nasser has written that Karima Aboud preserved the humbleness and humanity of her Palestinian subjects, setting aside the phantasmic aura in favor of the impression of real people being who they are. In the growing number of texts and exhibitions describing Aboud as a pioneer photographer, I noticed that often landscape-based picture postcards were tacked onto the discussion of her portraiture. These were not described in depth, but as I found more of her landscapes, it seemed that she had produced two distinct bodies of work. One, the intimate portraits of her contemporaries, and two, postcards, which were sold commercially and often employed biblical or orientalist visual language. By examining her picture postcards in depth, I hope that they might widen the scope of what we know about her working process and possibly expand the notions of her advertised nationalistic identity. Over the past few years, I was able to access a selection of her postcards in both public and private collections and purchase a number from international postcard dealers to be used for primary research. This is a typical Aboud postcard, an idyllic view of the landscape of Cana in Galilee, with the focus resting on the biblical wedding church in the background. Unlike her portraits, the image is free from any modern signifiers, and blurred peasants attend to a camel in the foreground. Flip the postcard around, and we have a different stamp to the lady photographer one you saw earlier. This one reads, Miss Karima Aboud, photographer Nazareth. It's written in English only, no Arabic, and so is her caption, something that would appeal to a more international or English-speaking consumer. Aboud is also locating herself geographically and professionally in Nazareth, northern Palestine, and much of the imagery on these postcards come from locations in and around the northern areas. In these next two postcards, Aboud takes us inside the church itself. 
Each uses the same frame, but they've been printed differently, and as you can see in the darker exposure on the right. But that said, the overall technical clarity in the negative is lacking. Inside the church, Abud has prioritized the light coming from above, creating this kind of spiritual ambiance. There is also a monk hiding out in front of the altar. You can see him in the left-hand copy a bit more clearly. Religious imagery again comes into play in this interior view of the Nazareth synagogue. Despite the fact that this is a Greek church and has been for hundreds of years, Boots' caption simply identifies it as the synagogue, this is a direct reference to the belief that this is the synagogue where Jesus worshiped and preached. Again, it's not a brilliant or well-processed exposure. The thing that matters in this image is its connection to the Bible. Over the past couple of decades, the value of the postcard as documentary record has shifted to one of greater significance. But in academic circles, as historian Sandra Ferguson writes, the postcard has historically been dismissed merely as the banal expression of popular culture. In trying to establish why this academic prejudice may exist, she cites the chameleon-like role of the postcard. It can function as documentary image, correspondence, lithographic or photographic print, advertisement or ephemera. When looking at a photographer like Abud, whose own photographic motivations are such a mystery, her postcards, either collected, mailed, or inscribed, can hold clues to her practice. In this particular copy of the synagogue postcard, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> In this particular copy of the synagogue postcard, the buyer has annotated it with their own description of the site, and importantly, the date, 1929. In one private collection in Jerusalem, which holds around 150 Abud postcards, the dates, postmarks, stamps, and messages present on some of the cards are all incredibly helpful in creating a market context for her work. It reveals postmarks from the late 1920s and early 1930s, and a variety of written messages to domestic and international recipients in English, French, and even Hebrew. And I brought a couple of examples along here today just so you can get a sense of the size of these postcards because seeing them on the screen can kind of alter uh, the object quality. So this is the size we're dealing with here. If you've noticed Abud's scratchy handwritten captions and guessed that this is her postcard from the earlier slide, then you're correct. Despite visual traces of the 20th century, my favorite part of this image is the sign to the right that reads, speed limit through Nazareth, 10 miles per hour. We're presented with a landscape in which the figures, especially the water carrier, evoke a Western view of an unchanged holy land. Fadil Sabah's version of the same scene lacks the modern signifiers and adds a few camels, but we can conclude that each of these photographers, with similarities right down to the format and color of their stamps, were participating in the same kind of commercial effort. Abu's postcards appear to fit a formula dictated by other male photographers. This is not to say she is an innovative. Instead, it demonstrates a keen knowledge of her market. Further renditions of this image show that Abud reworked her negatives. She cropped out former captions, wrote new ones, and also lithographically printed the same images in sets or series. The card to the top right, numbered 11, St. Mary's Well, illustrates the formality the image takes on when presented in this way. Abud sold different sets in the same format and numbered them one through the high 20s, as in this black and white printed card of Jacob's Well near Nablus. On the verso of these postcards, she was identified as an editeur in French, and again, Miss Karima Abud, with the Miss in brackets. It wasn't until I saw this card in person that I realized something curious about the scene, and that's that the figure on the right strongly resembles her father, Saeed Aboud. It's almost certainly him. Was this a holiday snap that she printed for commercial gain, or was she con consciously staging the picture using her family members as models? No one knows. Aboud also hand-tinted sets of her numbered card series, diversifying her commercial offerings once again. Here, she changes Saeed's hat from white to blue. It's likely that Abud made another postcard, number 27, on the same trip. In this image of the nearby archaeological site of Sebastia, she uses her father for scale against the columns. The presence of Saeed Abud in these two postcards is unique among much of the imagery produced for commercial consumption in early 20th century Palestine. 
the contrast between the male figures is clear, where an international audience might assume, assume the man to the left, dressed in robes, is the local, Abood's father takes on the role of the tourist. Throughout British colonial rule in the so-called Holy Land, imagery created by Western photographers for Western consumers dominated the photographic landscape, as it had since the medium's invention. In the postcard trade, pictures of a land stuck in time were produced to be sent around the world, softly justifying the imperial presence over both the Palestinian and Jewish populations. Here is a woefully small sampling of the type of biblical and orientalized imagery aimed at international pilgrims and tourists from the time. Historian Annalise Moores describes the basis of these images as built on the assumption that the appearance and customs of the present day inhabitants of Palestine had not changed since biblical times. In postcards from the mandate period, the colonial and biblical gaze often merge. We can see here the similarities between Abud's religious postcards in these images. The Cana of Galilee, sorry, I skipped ahead. <laughs> the Cana of Galilee view in the top left is strikingly similar to the first postcard that I showed you. But it's important to note that Abud also produced postcards of straight landscapes, shown here in the views of Nazareth, Tiberias, and the River Jordan. They're not terrifically exciting or even well focused in their photographic state. But when lithographically printed and hand-colored, again, take on a more professional tone. Where Abud may be most intriguing, however, is in her depiction of the peasant class, or as she refers to the man here, the native Palestinian. In this postcard, Abud, who we know to have publicly identified as a national photographer in the Palestinian sense, is also participating in the typification of her own people, as a male subject reclines smoking argile, an obvious Orientalist cliche. This is a world away from the way her father was depicted, almost as a traveling dandy. One reason for this is that Abud is working within a commercial market which expects and buys into the Orientalist cliche. In describing the work of Khalil Rad, the first Arab photographer to work in Palestine, historian Rona Sella notes how the photography of the colonial model, the Eurocentric, biblically focused gaze, influenced Rad. He built up a substantial body of work, which represented the local population, but is also punctuated by Western-style visual cues, resulting in something that Sella classifies as a hybrid body of work. This idea of hybridization, present in photographs made by local photographers working within a colonial structure, also applies to Abud. And it's complicated further by her status as a middle-class female with a Western-based education and the serious religious nature of her upbringing. In examining her depictions of the peasant class, as in the three postcards of the women here, we see a huge contrast to the studio portraits of her family members, shown earlier. This is not to diminish either body of work, but to illustrate the complexities of Abud's status as a working woman in an unusual profession under British colonial rule in Palestine. As I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, Abud's identity as the pioneering female photographer of Palestine has garnered many headlines over the past decade. In 2016, a Google Doodle published in the Middle East and North Africa celebrated her 123rd birthday. You can see it up there to the right. But having taken the birth date from an internet source, Google was off by five days. <laughs> In Bethlehem at Dar al Kalima University, a photography award in Abud's name has recognized young Palestinian photographers since 2016. And this year, the author Ibrahim Nasrallah published Biography of an Eye, a fictional tale inspired by Abud's own biography. The cover is there to the left. This portrait, taken of her by the Savidi studio in Haifa, is present in nearly any discussion of her work. In its dissemination, Abud often represents life before the establishment of the Israeli state in 1948, a year associated with the Nakba, or catastrophe, in Palestinian national memory. Reverend Raheb speaks about the importance of Abud's photographs in a 2013 documentary made by Mahassan Nasser Eldin, saying that, unfortunately, from 1948 onwards, the Nakba was a catastrophe in every sense of the word. We lost the land, we lost the narrative, we lost all accumulative processes of life that was taking shape and place during the previous decades. Karima's photographs open space and shed light on a very important era, showing where we were as a Palestinian nation. 
The latest exhibition of Abud's photography took place in September of this year in Lebanon, in conjunction with the Beirut Image Festival. In three different locations, the festival exhibited a selection of modern prints attributed to Abud, of images attributed to Abud. Primarily portraits, the prints came from a private collection in Canada, which only recently began publicizing their holdings of her work. The exhibition text emphasized Abud's con contribution to Arab photography as a whole. It highlighted her familial connection to Lebanon and referred to her as a well-rounded female who was able to secure impressive commissions. In examining Abud's postcard work here today, I hope I've been able to expand on this idea of the well-rounded female. Karima, <laughs> Karima Abud was certainly a pioneer. Um, but when taken as a whole, her work also suggests a multifaceted identity behind the pictures. A self-employed woman in Mandate Palestine who produced photographs in the face of societal, political, geographical, and gender-based pressures. Her image production varied based on her audience and the whims of the colonial market. But it's important to note that Abud's postcard production is not necessarily at odds with her identification as a Palestinian national studio photographer however incongruous the imagery may sometimes appear. Instead, it inspires far more questions about her working processes, relationships, business models, and belief systems, and suddenly Karima Aboud becomes a pioneer in more ways than one, at least to me. <laughs> um, thank you very much.